Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are looking at Unity 2019.3 which was just released today and we're going to check out some of the top level stuff that's going on in this release and kind of go from there. Now I'm going to actually try to make this one pretty short because I don't have a lot of energy in me right now. I've still got the flu, still battling with it and trying to keep my voice before it gives out. So let's just jump right in and take a look at the highlight features of Unity 2019.3 and this is actually probably the biggest release in quite some time. You can actually see it running in front of you right now. Um, and the big thing that you might notice is the fonts. The fonts all changed and the icons were all changed. There was a UI facelift with this particular release. And I, I agree with it actually across the board. I actually like the new fonts. I find it a lot clearer and crisper. And it works very well on high DPI monitors and displays. So this is definitely a nice uh, change that we've got going on here. This is in uh, 4K right now. I'm not publishing in 4K, but I'm recording in 4K. And... Um, it doesn't look muddy like it has in the past. So that's definitely a big improvement with 2019.3 is the UI and user interface. But truth of the matter is, a lot of the stuff that we're going to see in this release are all right here in the package manager. So one of the things that Unity's done is moved into more of a, a decoupled mode so that they've kind of made everything package-based, modular in the way that it's implemented. And a ton of the most important modules are now considered verified, or in other words, ready for production. Um, so we got the package manager here. The other cool thing with the package manager right now is you can actually um, add a package from Git, which is actually really nice. It makes it really easy to add new packages. But you'll notice here uh, a couple of the things that we're looking at, really key things here. So the high def render pipeline is now verified. So this is now considered ready for production. Um, ditto for the uh, no longer called lightweight render pipeline. It is now called the universal render pipeline, uh, which is right here. Uh, this is now considered verified as well. On top of that, they both will work with VR now and a number of other tools like the visual effects graph, they are now verified as well. Now we've covered a lot of these things in um, you know, previous videos here on the channel, but a lot of these things weren't ready to actually be used yet. So it's nice to see that we're finally getting to the point where uh, these features are actually considered production ready. Now I don't know the reality if it actually works that well is, but uh, again, we're taking a one step forward for sure because we've had all the kind of dependencies going on. So we've had the render pipeline requirements and they haven't been ready for prime time. So you can't really create a project that's dependent on the render pipeline until the render pipeline is considered ready to go. At the same time, we have the dots or data oriented technology stack, uh, that entire group of things, the burst compiler, the job system, and so on, um, they're all considered ready for prime time as well. So a lot of the things we've been waiting for maturing are actually finally matured at this point. So that is kind of the nutshell version. We're going to jump on over to the uh, blog. I'll, I'll look at this in a little bit of detail in a second, but I want to highlight a couple of the key features that I've actually uh, focused on. One of the things we got here is there is a new um, physics engine in there, including a Havoc-based physics engine. Uh, you can now actually buy it. So if you want to use Havoc Physics, if you're curious at the pricing, it is $20 per seat for Pro and Havoc Physics for Unity annual is $200 a year. So if you want to use Havoc Physics instead of their built-in physics system, it is now an option. It is available up on the store. So um, that is now live. Uh, the HD render pipeline, as I mentioned earlier on, is now out of preview. They also did this movie called The Heretic. It's actually kind of impressive. It was created in real time using the um, or sorry, it's a real-time rendering uh, using the HD render pipeline to give you film quality effects. Uh, so HD render pipeline is out of preview, which is a big step forward. Ditto for the universal render pipeline. This used to be called the lightweight render pipeline. It is now there. It's also got post-processing effects that it didn't before. Uh, so that is definitely nice to see. This is more of the uh, stripped down uh, kind of approach. Also at the same time, it has um, a 2D, uh, 2D renderer available now as well in the universal render pipeline. But so we have improvements to the shader graph, um, the visual effects graph, uh, that kind of stuff, all improvements, light probe updates. Um, so we definitely had some improvements on the rendering side of things, but the biggest thing for sure is the fact that uh, they're now available in um, out of the preview mode. So, you know, in theory, this stuff should be a little bit more ready to use. And then again, probably one of the um, smaller details, but probably the biggest detail in some ways is the updated user interface. And I, I actually, I do find Unity a whole lot nicer to work with using this new interface. They updated both the light and the dark themes. And if you're wondering, no, you still don't get the dark theme unless you buy professional or you hack the binary. Just you know, to be aware of that. So that is kind of it. The other thing that we've got going on here is the input system is available in preview. If you've used something like the Godot game engine or I think you, you, 
I think Unreal has something like this as well. It's basically a way of mapping uh, UI actions uh, or input actions to multiple inputs. So you can have the WASD keys and the arrow keys and the joystick all control the same set of movements. So you set up these aliases and then you know you just use them as opposed to having to uh, you know deal with each type of input separately. Uh, it's this one is a preview package, however, so do be aware of that. Um, and then another thing that was really big in 2019.3, and this is one of those areas where they've really challenged people is they're moving towards this dots workflow and that means that if you're working with game objects it's kind of a completely different thing but they created these automatic translators so that they can uh, transfer game objects over to and the entity system so you can work with dots again this is marked as experimental though so keep in mind that is um, very much uh, exactly what it says so it's not something that you can use in prime time yet and another area they got a lot of love in this particular release is 2d functionality they've been actually improving the 2d rendering capabilities in the unit game engine uh, at a pretty staggering rate as of recently so a bunch of new features are in here uh, there's this cool project actually as well too it's called the lost crypt if you want to check it out you can download it and uh, see some pretty advanced 2D night cycles, animation, you've got bone-based animations if you so wish it, tile map support, 2D shader graph support, uh, sprite shapes, which are kind of neat. So if you've got train defined by sprite shapes, you can kind of shape using a bezier curve. And we got sprite tools for, again, doing cutout animations uh, using uh, raster and vector formats directly in Unity. So very cool. We've also got the 2D pixel perfect stuff, a PD, uh, PSD importer. Uh, and so on. So 2D definitely got a lot of love in this particular release. And that's actually only kind of cutting the surface of what is in this release. If we go to the blog, uh, which again, I will link all of the linked articles down below, by the way. Um, we got a number of other things going on here. So we've got the new uh, train updates. We can now create holes, caves, and trenches in 2019.3, which is amazing because even just like Unity 2019.1, there was literally nobody working on the train tools. Now train is getting a lot of love, which is nice to see. Uh, we got dots improvements, again, the 2D improvements that we, we talked about briefly there. Uh, some tools, uh, programmers features, uh, configurable enter play mode as an experimental feature. So it should change your startup speeds, which should be pretty nice that way. Uh, the physics library was upgraded to 4.1 release. Uh, again, we've talked about this briefly. Uh, if you're using Dots, Havoc Physics for Unity is now available you be via the package manager and you can use subscriptions to get a hold of that if you want to use Havoc Physics instead of the Unity Physics. Uh, the render pipeline, we saw both the HD render pipeline is now mature and the universal render pipeline, previously known as the lightweight render pipeline, are both ready for prime time, including all the tangential stuff like the visual effects graph and the shader graph. Uh, so definitely uh, a maturity to this release. We've definitely had a lot of improvements here. Package Manager got some love. Like I said, the ability to download things directly from Git, that's quite nice. And then we've got this new uh, asset database pipeline, um, which provides asset dependency tracking and many other improvements, lay the foundation for a more reliable, performant, and scalable pipeline. So they're basically replacing the underlying plumbing in um, the Unity system for uh, assets and handling assets. Uh, when I first opened this project up, when I when I loaded this guy in, it actually did a conversion from asset pipeline one to two, and it took quite a while to be honest. So uh, do be aware of that. The conversion process is a little weighty, but hopefully this new asset pipeline will make it faster to import assets and get things going and all that stuff in the future. So uh, definitely an interesting uh, development here. But the biggest thing I could say with this particular release is it's all about maturity so finally the lightweight render pipeline is a thing the, the HD render pipeline is a thing you can use both of them for um, VR development now and so on so a lot of things that we've been waiting for to come out of experimental stage and become uh, verified are now verified so hopefully some of the instabilities and problems that we've had of late with unity the, the fragility of the package systems and such with dots and the, the render pipelines programmable render pipelines coming to maturity hopefully we we'll see it just becomes a lot easier to work with um, the Unity game engine going forward. So there's a ton in this particular release. Nothing really shocking. This is, uh, you know, all stuff that we previewed previously on this channel, but there's definitely some really nice stuff coming in this particular release. And uh, I, I'm, I'm fairly impressed by it. Now, it'd be interesting to see in reality how well these things work, you know, now that Dot is ready for prime time, theoretically, and the HD render pipeline and Lightwood render pipeline are ready for prime time. Is it going to make things easier to work with uh, the Unity game engine? It'd be interesting to find these things out. And I think that's where I got to end it because I am losing my voice now. Um, so again, a little bit short, and we kind of 
grazed over some of the stuff, but I will link the uh, full article down below. So if you want to get into the details, and I've also done videos on a lot of the things that we were covered in this video. So if you want to check in the channel, just search for it. I've probably done a video on each individual subject. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.